वेलकम टू द बिग फाइट आई निधि राजदान 42 पीपल आर नाउ डेड इन दिल्लीज कॉम्यूनल वायलेंस एंड ओवर 300 इंजर्ड मोस्ट ऑफ देम डाइंग ऑफ हरिफिक इंजरीज एंड वूम्स सस्टेन ऑन टू डेज ऑफ राइटिंग ऑन द ट्वेंटी फोर्थ एंड द ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ ऑफ फेबररी इट इज अस्टाउंडिंग दैट सच लेवल्स ऑफ वायलेंस हैव टेकन प्लेस हियर इन द नेशनल कैपिटल वेर लॉ एंड ऑर्डर कम्स डायरेक्टली अंडर द सेंटर इट इज अस्टाउंडिंग दैट द डेलीज पुलिस फोर्स फेल सो अटली its citizens its people leaving most people without much faith in them anymore it is astounding that our judiciary has not seen it fit to intervene immediately and hold people to account the one judge who tried to do that was instead transferred out in a late night order it is astounding that the entire political class of delhi of this country has failed people from the government to the aam aadmi party government in delhi to the entire opposition so when institutions break down that way that they have done now does that leave riot victims with any hope that's our focus on the big fight tonight and let's take a look at what has happened on friday firstly delhi has a new police chief sn shrivastav has uh, is going to be taking over uh, as far as the riot cases are concerned more than 100 fir's have now been filed by the police if you look at the nature of the injuries and the uh, wounds that people who have died have there's a list of 35 dead that the people put out 13 of those were killed by gunshots 22 by physical assault by stabbing and with nine bodies we're still not clear how exactly those people died another telling figure is that almost 13000 sos calls were made to the police and the highest number of those calls were made on those two days on the 24th and the 25th of february that's on monday and on tuesday and remember it was only on wednesday when the national security adviser ajit doval stepped in that things started to calm down just a bit there were many complaints by riot victims most of them are saying that the police didn't respond or that they came too late and mind you among those who are complaining are people like akali mp naresh gujral who very uh, bluntly cited an example of where he had pleaded for the police to help uh, a bunch of people who were stuck who were stranded and he said that they didn't even listen to his personal calls for help i spoke earlier to the former lieutenant governor of delhi najib jung for this story on this institutional breakdown and i'm going to begin the program with him tonight mr jung you've been a lieutenant governor of delhi are you shocked by the way first of all that the police has utterly failed to do its job yes nidhi i've been saying this for last 3 4 days that i'm shocked i'm appalled uh, at uh, the the great failure of delhi police to have acted promptly and in time uh, you know this would not have come to this pass had the leadership been provided adequately uh, when the young dcp was injured uh, and taken to hospital that's the time when the leadership was completely missing from the ground and uh, mayhem broke loose had the leadership been there but more than that i am i am you know absolutely shocked and surprised because i have uh, 44 45 years of administrative experience with me that the police commissioner uh, failed to appear at the spot i mean this is unheard of he went uh, accompanied only when the nsa was pulled in and had the nsa himself not gone then i don't know if the delhi police would have been able to control it and then Uh, there are some scenes i hope they are not true of uh, policemen joining rioters now i really hope that that's not true because these videos can be vitiated but if that is true then that is absolutely shocking so all in all uh, it's an intelligence failure it's a failure of police leadership uh, and uh, and i i i can't understand because it's a 80000 police force well trained they have a budget of 8000 crores Uh, they are well equipped so all in all it's a it's a very very poor show in the national capital that is you know one institution whose failure you're talking about uh, mr jang but there's also the abdication of the court the fact that you had one bench of the high court led by justice murli dhar that wanted the police to act in 24 hours on hate speeches and then the next day a different bench of the high court led by the chief justice of the high court no less that gave the police four weeks well my feelings are the same as yours because you know in times such as this uh, optics are very very necessary what people see and believe justice murli dharan was doing an outstanding job 
So even if his, if his transfer had, uh, it had been decided to transfer him, this order could have waited for three or four days. I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't stand to reason to move him out, move him out at a midnight order. And then the second bench has behaved abysmally poorly, giving a one month time to, uh, to the union government to react. This is unacceptable. I mean, you can, you can react in a week, you can react in three days, and I would imagine in a crisis situation like this, there would be day-to-day -day hearings. So, all in all, again, the judiciary has disappointed us. But the bigger worry also, though, Mr. Jung, is that we've come apart as a society, that, you know, Delhi was simmering for some time, but the worry is that this is not going to be the end of it. Do you think that as well? I really hope Nidhi, that you are wrong, but I don't think that you are wrong because uh, we have seen an insidious poison coming into society in the last four or five years. Uh, it's dangerous for India, it is dangerous for society and unless we have the political leadership coming out uh, to, to stem this rubbish, uh, we won't see the end of it so easily. Uh, the political leadership has disappointed Delhi immensely in these last four days. I don't see any political party in the field. The, the central ministers were not there. The Delhi ministers were not there. I mean, having been elected, it's not fair for Mr. Kejriwal uh, to be at the Rajghat on that day rather than in the field. Uh, where was the Congress party in these days? You can take a delegation to meet the, prime, the president, but that's not enough. I don't see bold enough uh, practices down in the field by any political party. So are we leaving the field open only to social workers? That's not fair. So I really think that unless strong steps are taken to punish these people, to make an example of all those involved, irrespective of caste, irrespective of political alliances, irrespective of their religions, we will not move ahead. And we will, uh, this can unfortunately uh, trigger other reactions in other smaller towns. Pe you know, they say that share ke mumma khun lagta hai. So if, uh, if people are emboldened by lack of activity, then I'm afraid, uh, I'm afraid that this will not end here. Well, Mr. Jung, thank you for joining us this evening. And I do hope that your words of caution are taken seriously by whoever is listening out there. I, I just want to say one more thing, Nidhi, and I, again, I've been saying this for two months and I would beg the central government, please make serious overtures to open dialogue. Dialogue with people, dialogue with the opposition parties, dialogue with civil society, it's a must. Otherwise, this won't end here. Mr. Jung, thank you very much for joining us on NDTV this evening. Well, lots of words of caution there from the former Lieutenant Governor of Delhi. I'd like to come to our panelists in the studio here and begin uh, with Mr. Prakash Singh, uh, who's been the former DGP of UP and who had submitted a report to the Supreme Court, uh, what, some 15 years ago on police reforms. And the Supreme Court issued directives based on that report. And no government has been able to implement that th those reforms that were suggested by Mr. Prakash Singh back then. And among the things you had said, sir, was the need to limit political control over the police. Are you astounded again, for want of a better word, that till today there has been no political will to do this, to implement what you had suggested? I wouldn't say I'm astounded, but I'm definitely disappointed that in spite of uh, the Supreme Court having given its judgment in 2006, after a protracted PIL which lasted for 10 years, uh, even to date, the states are dragging their feet uh, in the matter of implementing the directions of the Supreme Court. And uh, there has been no commitment on the side, on the part of any state government. So, I mean, I would say all political parties across the spectrum are to blame if police reforms have not been introduced as mandated by the Supreme Court. I mean, one of the very important recommendations, uh, uh, directions by the Supreme Court was that the police needs to be insulated from external pressures. And for that, they wanted the state security commissions to be set up in different states. Well, some states have set up state security commissions, but in the process, they have diluted its composition, it's, uh, they have reduced its powers and uh, curtailed its mandate. Uh, and uh, whereas the, the Supreme Court wanted this to be uh, a, a body where, whose recommendations are binding, they have made it a recommendatory body. They, I mean, the, the sum and substance is that 
it is a farcical compliance of Supreme Court's directions. And uh, I mean, this thing has been said uh, so many times, and every time there is a crisis, we talk of police reforms. Every time there is a crisis, we talk of Supreme Court's directions. But uh, after the uh, after the situation normalizes and uh, people go back to their respective locations and uh, vocations, uh, things are back to square one, and people forget about the police reforms. Can I ask you, sir, that on, on this question of hate speeches and, and the filing of FIRs in hate speeches, if you had been heading the Delhi police today, would you be waiting for, this, for the court to give an order to file FIRs? Look, I belong to a school where I would not wait for directions either from the executive or from the courts. I would do what is mandated by law, what is expected of a police officer without waiting for any directions. I mean, that is what I have been, uh, uh, that is how I have been taught. That is how I have been brought up, and these are the values we have cherished. But today, somehow, a culture has developed where, for everything, for even small matters, you look up uh, to the state capital and the home minister or the chief minister. Ki sahab isme kya kiya jaye? Arre, what kya kiya jaye? You have the books of law before you. You have the constitution before you. You have the these, powers, and these are your guidelines. And you have all the powers. You don't need any any directions from above. Well, Ajay Kumar, you've been an IPS officer. Now you're a politician. What do you make of the stunning fall? Of, of, of the police, of the I mean, if citizens <coughs> don't have faith in the people who are supposed to protect us, and this is not just these riots where we've seen the Delhi police utterly fail us as citizens, I mean, a series of things that have happened, their handling of the student protests and their mishandling, their complicity, they're not just standing by and <coughs> being inept, they're complicit in so much of this. So Nidhi, uh, uh, if you look at it, uh, I think it's been the story of police for the past 70 odd years, which has changed in terms of in terms of events and now it's in Delhi and it's got much more coverage. But if you see the history of police, and like Mr. Prakash Singh correctly said, that whether it's Hashimpur incident, whether it's riots in Bihar, whether it's riots everywhere, whether it's Bombay riots, the continuous failure of police is fundamentally for the simple reason, the impact has become much worse now. For the fundamental reason is interference, definitely yes. The second issue is the ability of the government to extract revenge on the police officers, which is actually scaring everyone. The fact is no civil servant will be speaking, but the, why do you think civil servants don't act? They don't act not because they don't want to act. They are scared of the repercussions of that act. That means transfer, inquiry, stopping pension. And then you fundamentally come back to the same question is, how do you protect them? So how are you won't beat the police on, on this issue? He's always looking over his shoulder to see what the political exit. It used to never happen. See, you had tall leaders in the 60s and 70s, and maybe I've seen it in Bihar. You had huge amount of interference. So it's politically agnostic. It's not a particular political tribe which is doing it. Totally. No, totally I agree, agree with you. Yeah. And that's what I'm, I'm, and as per the discussion. And you will continue to see Delhi unless you change the police. And the country needs to answer this question is are we ready to pay? Because find it will be, it's easy to blame the cops. FIS registering against all political parties, whether it's Aam Aadmi, Congress, BJP, put them in prison, you would have known it. Second issue, I'll just finish it with, as a police officer, as a young police officer, I, I realized my mistake, we had a small communal incident in Patna, and the signals were there before, burning of shops. Now this I learned on the job, right? The standard protocol, I'm 100% sure Delhi was having these signals for the past one week. They were minor incidents of arson, and any police officer worth his salt, I have hold the police commissioner, uh, the last police commissioner, definitely responsible. That if these indicators are so clear for even a, a nincompoop, why couldn't you flood it? Forget the political leadership, because political leadership may interfere with, the, with letting people go. So net-net, India will continue to see these events unless we prevent it by bringing in, insulating the police and implementing the police, uh, the recommendation of the Supreme Court in spirit and law, protecting the police officers from action. But you know, it's like Mr. Prakash Singh says, every time something happens, and he is the one who keeps coming back. I don't know how many shows I would have anchored with Mr. Prakash Singh sitting with us, you know, over Absolutely. the last 20 years, discussing the same thing. Years. 15 years before the Supreme Court ka order aaya tha. So chalo, 15 years, sir, you and I have sat and talked about police reforms. Natasha Badwar is with us. She's a columnist, she's a filmmaker, and she has been following this story closely. She's been talking to victims of, of this violence. 
you hear the horror stories, Natasha, of, you know, the, the police apathy. I talked about Naresh Gujral's example. There are countless others. When you have 13,000 SOS calls made in a span of two days, you realize that that is where, you know, the maximum casualties and fatalities have also happened. What are the experiences that people are telling you about? Yeah. <clears throat> so, as it happens, um, I've been working with the Karwane Mohabbat and, uh, you know, we were supporting the sit-in protests in the city, a, a coalition of organizations, and when the violence uh, began to escalate from the, from the 23rd of this month, we very quickly came together, lots of individuals, lots of organizations to volunteer to work in the area to try and stop the violence and to provide relief. And while these calls, these numbers come from the police, we also have numbers because we gave our helpline numbers. And on Sunday night, on Monday night, on Tuesday this week, uh, we have received on our social media as well as WhatsApp, as well as our uh, helpline numbers, over 5,000 phone calls. Civil society has been sitting up, you know, young people, individuals sitting up all night uh, receiving those calls, coordinating those rescue efforts, and in fact, Justice Muli Dharan, when he gave that order uh, past midnight on the 24th for the police to step in, <clears throat> uh, for the police to facilitate ambulances to go in. It was a civil society initiative that actually, uh, you know, uh, got, got that to happen. That's true. So we're looking at a situation where the central government is looking away, if not being complicit, the state government, the newly elected state government, you know, which has been brought in with such hope, which is actually, uh, you know, the, the MLAs of the areas affected are all uh, ruling MLAs, most of them are ruling MLAs, refusing to respond to their own people. So today, uh, as a matter of fact, I was in Mustafabad most of the day, and there are people telling us on the ground, we voted for them and they betrayed us. And the people who were attacking them the rioters were saying, so you have free uh, water, now use that water to douse these fires. So you have free bus passes, use those buses to escape from here. So you know, you're being punished for having voted. I mean, my, my <laughs> the, it's still so fresh, the, the elections in Delhi. Uh, so it's really, really a very, very dismal scene that the and in a way, I mean, there are these rays of hope because who is standing up for the people who, are, who have been victimized? It's their own neighbors. The stories that we hear from, from, from the ground is that of Hindus, religion. Yeah, we, we've you know, carried those all stories. these Muslim, yeah. uh, uh, Muslims who are yeah. stranded are being rescued by the Hindus. Hindus who are stranded are being rescued by their own Muslim neighbors. It's a very syncretic neighborhood. So today when we, were, we they said, Masjid to jal gai, usme kya dekhoge? We want to show you the mandir. Uh, in, you know, in Chaman Park, because usko humne bachaya hai. Aap dekhiye, teen mandir humne bachaya hai. Because, you know, they, they live together and, and they didn't ask for this violence, they didn't perpetrate this violence and now they are stuck with the aftermath of this violence and an extremely callous state. Mr. Deshwata Nigam is with us. And Mr. Nigam, where does the buck stop for this violence in Delhi? See, let me tell you very clearly, if on the first day when Shah Rukh became the poster boy with the gun, the shoot at sight orders were given at that point of time, when then probably things would have been controlled. But then the other side of the story is probably the casualties would have been far higher than what you're noticing today. But if I were there, I would have given that shoot at sight order, irrespective of what would be the casualty, irrespective of what would be the consequences, because that goes by the rule book. The amount of people coming on the road, there was a possibility, yes, uh, it could have been done. But then it is for the Delhi police spokesperson to tell you as to why that decision was not taken. Right, it's the Delhi police uh, that took that decision. I is it hard for us to say that it's the central government that has no, failed us? No, we have Delhi? a police commissioner system where the police is absolutely Who does the police report to in Delhi, Mr. Nigam? See, they do not report for day-to-day -day affairs. For policy decisions, really? they do. Yes, that's Law the order reality. Law comes under who in Delhi? It will be under Home Minister, but it would be only for policy decisions, not to day-to-day -day decisions or the right. on-the-field uh, decisions. And when the lives of people are at stake, when it's a life and death situation and you have a riot, and now we have already got more than 40 people dead, so is that not something that comes under the purview of the Home Ministry and the Central sir, Government? I think maybe I don't understand how no, it no, works. No, no. See, Please the fact me. is, what you are speaking is a with a benefit of hindsight. 
it's not hindsight it's what the law no, is and what the no, what the law, constitution see, says about it, the structure in delhi no, so i'm just wondering law, law is the running of the police administration and the police commissioner system is absolutely independent <laughs> as compared to the <coughs> system that you have in your neighboring states where the police is the police is, the delhi police is independent it actually reports to the home police, ministry so i don't know what you're saying police commissioner system i'm making a distinction mm. which is a very clear distinction and very simple to understand policy decision and day to day affairs are different right and that is where the so police so would you acknowledge if that is the case because i mean we can keep having this argument that then the center woke up too late when it decided to send mr doval in let me on, tell you that's a very important yeah. question and probably most almost all the channel seems to have neglected the answer out there when there is a systematic brutalization of a intelligence officer a mob cannot recognize that officer it has to be a very specific information and how ISIS do you know that he was targeted because he worked with the ib 400 times stabbing isis style of brutality is something which it's indicates it's extremely brutal but let, i'm saying do you have you, evidence let, let me, to suggest that he was targeted let, because he works for the intelligence bureau that appears because when there me. is a mob frenzy would like this you allow this, me to finish it, see i'm just asking no, no, a question no no just note down your questions and don't uh, stop no, my I flow of thought no i ask the qu uh, questions the way i like to no 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 but then that's, i that's also like no i also like to answer the way i like to yeah, answer i don't like to be bullied mr no 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 do i yeah No, no I, I know I know uncomfortable uh, no questions I. are considered so bullying. So when you ask a question But I'm asking you for give, evidence. Do you give, have evidence give that, that this respect, officer this this young nobody, man who nobody, lost his life in this horrific way Nobody has evidence as of now it is a subject everything is a subject matter of investigation right, right. now. Right. Okay so we don't So know neither that. you have nor no, I have. I'm on, that's why so I asked we don't know either way. So I'm intelligent opinion out here and allow okay. me to do that. Right. Now attack on DCP and the other ACPs throwing acid on police uh, this thing Ratan dying out there. there's a systematic pattern out here and that pattern probably have you compiled. forgotten the muslim victims of this violence no no i'm, Because I'm not people on no, both no, sides I'm, have I'm, died i'm saying the police selective targeting of police i am saying so i am not taking any religion's name please make that distinction no, out no you here. have actually but anyway no i have please not go ahead. i have not i have only saying the police officers right if they happen to be you've taken their no, names no if they happen to be you know hindus it's not their fault please remember right. that they were performing Because their see, duties for for a, for the lot, for, for the lot of people there are victims here who are all indians actually yes certainly you know, but i am Hindu making Muslim. a larger point that yes. there was a selective target of police and paramilitary forces so, that compelled mr doval to come on the ground which so, clearly indicates hmm. there are larger issues impinging on national security probably we don't have that uh, information in public domain but mr doval's coming on the ground is enough indication the things on the ground So who is to more. blame for this uh, violence? I come back to the original see, question. The violence, Where does the buck stop? See, the, the fact Delhi is, let there be an independent inquiry on this and fix somebody's responsibility. Mm -hmm. I, till then, it will be your opinion versus my opinion. Let that inquiry. It's not my be opinion. Done. I just so, know who the Delhi police reports to. I want to ask mm -hmm. Mr. Fan Habib, who's a historian and activist and commentator of our times, your first thoughts on what you've just heard, Mr. Nigam Singh. You see, my uh, my problem is that we. we still look at uh, victims in terms of hindus and muslims because all the three names he took you know though he says he didn't but but they all police officers is it police police officers police officers yes oh. use them as police i said police officers if there is violence Selective if there is violence if there is violence if there is violence mob mob frenzy their police officers can also be victims and uh, civil uh, uh, society can too. civil society members can also be victims so that's not something very very special and sp police officers have actually suffered even before so because they are on duty and they have to actually face that uh, sometimes and a very very sad part of uh, of of their of their uh, career whatever they want they are supposed to do the point is my for me the extent of violence is not actually just as just a ca issue because the level of violence the hatred the way people were brutalized the way properties were lost the way people like ankit sharma was uh, was killed and so many others were killed the brutality of it is not just caa it is something else and that something else is what we saw in the past one month or two months before election the sort of hate campaign which was going on the sort of speeches which, which were being delivered it was it was as such a well, i have never seen such an election in my life you know we have seen so many so point is if today the actually any such thing the, any such killing etc violence is a culmination of something which has preceded it violence doesn't take place all out, 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 out of the blue it happens because something else has preceded it and that something else was that you were instilling hatred in the minds of the people you were indoctrinating in them with with, with certain world view 
about a certain section of society and those people are actually f not being questioned even now so my complaint is that you need to need to be need to be uh, seen doing justice so that now whatever has happened has happened Ajit, like dawal sahab shouldn't have been there because it's not his job he came because uh, the police commissioner failed our system failed because he's he's too big for, for 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 something like this to be walking around the streets we were surprised that he had to come you know, and to his credit, and, and he he took questions I'm, I'm, from anti citizens. It's creditable for him to come, but yeah, he shouldn't have come. He did, and he and he it's tried to. A, he did what actually pol the political class should have been doing, which is to yeah, go yeah, and absolutely, meet people absolutely. and try to reassure them. So many other people it's failed. Not his job, but he did it. So yeah. many other institutions, political as well as otherwise, failed people. That's why he had to come. So the point is, there is a failure at so many levels where somebody like him had to appear and so, bring in some peace and sanity. Nandita Rao is with us and she's a lawyer. She practices in the high court and um, Nandita, the thing is, as citizens, when we see, okay, we have low expectations, to be very honest, from the police, even in the best of times or, or moderate expectations. Those, you know, have, have sort of gone completely, in my view, at least for, for, for those affected in, in this violence in Delhi at the moment. Then you turn to the court and you think that, okay, the judiciary is still our savior. And then you see what happened with the Delhi High Court this week. So it's not actually just about the Delhi riots. If you look at the way past riots have been handled by the judiciary, look at 1984, look at 2002, and so many others in between. There has been no real closure in any of them. Even today, if we're still talking about 1984, by the way, Justice Murlidhar also yes. sent Sajjan Kumar to jail for life for 1984. That, that aside, we don't have closure in any of these riot cases, do we? because the judiciary has failed us. Uh, Nidhi, I'm, I'm very sorry to say this as an officer of the court, not just a lawyer, that uh, I, I'm also very, very deeply disappointed. And I would like to say that the police is always an easy whipping boy because they are out there. But, uh, you know, the police, as I would like to use the words of Justice Joseph of the Supreme Court, the first thing he said on the first day to the Solicitor General was, that the police needs to be made independent and professional. And if you had stopped interfering earlier, we wouldn't have seen this happen. So to earlier, he obviously means pre-December. And for a Supreme Court judge, he said, I need to say this because my commitment is to this institution. So a Supreme Court judge expressed his anguish to say, let the police <coughs> do their job. Now we, we, of course, blame the police officers that, look, you've taken an oath on the national flag and the constitution. You are IPS officers, not a private militia. So even if you are getting instructions from some political master, you refuse it. But then we see that even judges who are constitutional authorities, who have the protection of the constitution, are being transferred around as if they have no constitutional immunity. And you see that they are also reluctant to pass an order. 156.3 CRPC says, if a cognizable offense is made out, an FIR must be registered. For the first time in my life, I hear an argument being made, and I'm very sure that the police hasn't made this, that the time is not right for registration of the FIR. So what I'm hearing as a lawyer and what people are hearing as citizens is that the mob sentiment is going to determine the rule of law. The time is not, they don't say cognizable offense hasn't taken place. I can accept that because this is the prerogative of the police to decide whether it's an offense or not. And hate speech, freedom of speech is a very delicate issue. But when you say that the time is not right for registration of FIR, and a court accepts it, a constitutional court, the message that is going to the citizenry is that the mob sentiment, the fear of the mob is, is, uh, is, uh, is dominating the functioning of the rule of law. That the, in, and now I come very quickly to uh, uh, Sir Mr. Prakash Singh's, one of the directions of the Supreme Court was separate law and order from investigation so that your investigation is not hampered by law and order considerations. The law and order takes its decisions strategically based on what is the ground reality and the investigator goes about investigating 
based on the exigencies of the offenses which are committed. Now, today the entire police force is busy with law and order. The NGOs and activists are going around doing the, uh, you know, uh, yeah. the, the, the work of, uh, you know, providing food and all the other work. Who is investigating? <coughs> the evidence is disappearing. The CCTV cameras will be broken. Whoever be the criminals? My learned colleague yeah. over here is naming particular people of particular religions. I don't want to get into that provocative talk. Whoever is the criminal, evidence is disappearing. And then after 20 years, like 1984, you will say there's no evidence. Blame the police. But what can the police do? The same chap is doing law Ajoy and order. Ajoy has a point on what, what you said, yeah. Nandita. Yeah. My colleague, Mr. Deswatan Nigam said, Nidhi, on deeper conspiracy. So there are two fallacies in that. If it's a deeper conspiracy, then the government of India should be at the Home Minister and everyone should resign because if a deeper conspiracy is creating a situation in Delhi first. Then it's an so, intelligence failure. No, yes. so monumental failure, which I don't believe. The second issue is whenever you raise this boogie, we've been hearing it from 1970, from Mrs. Indira Gandhi's time, deeper state, foreign power. It's hate going down. The peddlers of hate, the political leadership get away with that hate. The impunity in which these people are doing because they will never get punished. Yes. The police who is looking over their back because they are scared of their posting. A judge gets transferred, police, police commissioner. I'm telling every civil servant today. I have never seen that. I'm saying they were earlier venal political uh, governments. They also troubled civil servants. But for the first time, the scare is because I see a lot of my colleagues. They are perpetually scared for everything. So the question again is, if there has been a riot in Delhi, then the Home Minister of India should be accountable. We take responsibility as a political party also that we failed in certain aspects. We are not walking away from it. We said that, listen, we did it wrong. Uh, one of the uh, members of our party name has come, please prosecute evidence, charge sheet, uh, penalize in maximum. But every political party needs to step up to the plate and say that. And we are saying it, and we continue, and I'm not saying that we did a great job. There are certain lacunas. We have made mistakes. Uh, we could have done better. There's no debate mm. on that. What N uh, Natasha said correctly, where we should have been hitting the ground. But the fact is that in independent India, hate is peddled because the political repercussions to get to power <coughs> is to create that polarization. And they've understood this game. They will continue to spread hatred because it brings them political debate. Let me ask Mr. Nikola. And there's no legal no and last and yeah. there's no legal legal repercussion for their evil. That is the point. That there is no action. So let Chalo, Delhi High Court has said let the police come back after four weeks and, and let us know what they can do about these FIRs on hate speeches. But Mr. Nigam, don't you think that the BJP as a first step should take action against those leaders who have made those speeches, as should every party against whom there are, you know, leaders who are members of their party who have done anything similar? See, see the fact is, is on your own channel, I have said so. I have never approved of those statements. And obviously, it is up to the BJP to take action or not. Certainly, there are, there are issues with it, and, and BJP has to answer those questions. I am not representing BJP. Now, a lot of things have been said about judiciary. Let us be very clear about the system, and I am also a lawyer, as you know. And, and this was a public interest litigation filed in Delhi High Court. Normally, it goes to the Chief Justice of Delhi High Court. That day, Chief Justice was not available, so it went to Justice Murlidhar, marked by Justice Sistani, who was the second in command. And once he heard it and Chief Justice came back, and I have done public interest litigation in the past, and it, if it happens, then the case again goes back to the Chief Justice, the regular bench which hears the public interest litigation. Whether Mr. Murlidhar was there or not that day, transferred or not, it was immaterial, it would go to the Chief Justice because that's the roster. So to impugn that he was been transferred in the night and therefore... But he was the transferred in no, the night. It's fine, impugned. fine, but that is immaterial mm -hmm. to the case. Is it? Yes. No. It is because Wednesday It's just a the, coincidence. Wednesday that the chief has come and it mm -hmm. would go back to him again because that's the regular roster. Hmm. That, so is, that is the law. So the, so the transfer suddenly just pack your bags Makes no and go difference. to the Punjab and Haryana. Even if you impute motive for hmm. a second, hmm. it would not make any difference because the matter would be heard by the Chief Justice of Delhi High Court because that's the PIL's regular roster. It would go back to him. That is the law of Delhi High Court. Not the if rules it's part heard. No, no, it is not part heard. It's hmm. not a regular matter. It never, the order does not but say it's part heard. 
It, it does not say part at please read the order. It neither mentions 1984 in the order. Judge, Nowhere it is. Those are no, obita no. dicta, you know, kind of an no, observation that, made by the court. That's a separate issue. But no, it's, it's not a separate. It's, it's very no, important no, no, because a no, no. lot of motives are being imputed out because here. No, no, there are not. Now you find Judiciary motives. has not failed. The Chief Justice of right. Delhi High Court is you very competent person. You think that it's okay to, for the, uh, to be honest, do you think that giving four weeks to the police to uh, so come me, back let on FIRs? You. Let me tell you. I mean, honestly, do you think that's okay? The arguments, if you were there in the court, I was there and a lot of things were said from all the sides and probably uh, four weeks yes four weeks time is that is that justified see, do you think in a situation like this see the fact is only three videos were taken there were so many other videos around and the police how said how long they does it take to, to watch videos five they, days no whatever if their authenticity on, everything is to be you know uh, has to be Tell seen seven days no no we don't know you have to ask, get a police spokesperson, how much time would they take, where they would you send, know, how much normal circumstances it's take place. The fact that they did not say that a cognizable offense is there not I agree. No, they there said I will that agree. time is not right to register. See, there I so agree. That, that is agree. what is a dangerous thing. And Had more, they said, we need time to see whether cognizable offenses have been made out. Because I would agree that freedom of speech and hate speech, there's a very fine line. But they don't say cognizable offense is not made up. But I want to ask that Mr. Prakash Singh. That's a very, very serious thing. On this point of, about the judiciary, because you've talked about the police and, and you acknowledge the, you know, the failure mm. of the police here, sir. How do you feel, you know, as a senior officer, as a citizen, about the way the judiciary is handling these matters? You see, at times they come out with brilliant uh, performance. At times they sadly disappoint you. I mean, it's both ways. I mean, there, there have been occasions when we, yeah. you felt relieved and you felt happy, uh, you felt happy that there's a judiciary here to take uh, care of matters when everybody else fails. But there have also been occasions when they, they themselves miserably fail. And, uh, but so, that's how it is. So can I ask you then, then what, this is the question I'm asking, what hope do ordinary citizens have when every pillar that we all look up to whether it is the judiciary, the police, the political establishment, when all these pillars fail us, what do we do? I would like to ask the people themselves. You have great expectations from the institutions. Why do you elect criminals uh, to the parliament? Why do you send uh, robbers and dacquards to assemblies? <laughs> you will get the government you deserve. Absolutely. If, uh, I mean, the question has to be asked to the people of this country Absolutely. also. See, institutions are failing. But are the people uh, Absolutely. rising to the occasion? Blame the victims. Hmm. For no, no, no. You for disagree with that, happened. Natasha? No, Natasha, no, Natasha but one It's not like they've been presented with some so. great choices. And, uh, you know, here, here is a people who have voted for a good administration. They've brought back the Ahmadmi Party to, uh, to power. And while uh, they stood back and said the police is not under our control, so we cannot control this violence, what about now? If the violence may have abated, maybe in the next four or five days there will be no more. No, but what about relief? What about rescue? What about rehabilitation? What about legal True. justice, reparation? Who is going to step in now? Why do we still have a vacuum? So today the Delhi government has said those whose homes have been burnt can move to the Ren Baseras. You know what the Ren Baseras are? They are makeshift shelters for the homeless. So have we, I mean, these are people, these are extended families. They had weddings coming up. They have children going to school in the, in the locality. So instead of rehabilitating them, you are reducing them, their dignity to homelessness. You're saying just go and find some place. And do you think Ren Baseras have any space left for riot victims? I mean, where will the homeless go? We, we know that there's already overcrowding. So this kind of complete lack of political will, are we going to say the time is not right to do rehabilitation? Yes. Absolutely. You know? uh, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. So while I we are distracted by hate Mr. speech and Why? we are distracted by who caused the violence, I mean, those are important questions. But we need but to look at what There's also next. an immediate yeah. first aid that you need to move in with. That is also the duty of the state. And who, what, what is left? Religious organizations? We are celebrating Gurdwaras for saying you can come in. Civil society, we are patting ourselves on the back. But how many people can civil society provide supplies for? How long? For? How long? Exactly. No, I, Lacks I, I of I agree. people are displaced and we are feeding 2,000 people. Natasha, completely. Because, uh, because civil society has its own limits. Because the, the, the work which state can do, civil society can only, only complement it. Civil, civil society on its Can't own. Take the lead. Cannot really oh. take the lead and take the, the cannot take the responsibility. The point is, Sorry, the people are left to themselves 
where civil society comes in only as some sort of a uh, respite from the misery they are in. State has disappeared. That is that is a problem, and that is something which because um, I, I know lots of people from my village who have been living in in uh, Bhajanpura and Jafarabad, and I've been calling them again and again, and all of them had this complaint that nobody has come to actually talk to us, talk about our misery. It's only the they, they have some very good stories to tell that Hindus and Muslims together, they have actually brought about uh, sanity in the area. They have guarded their uh, their lanes and by lanes uh, together in the night. So all that has happened. Let me ask Ajay Kumar about that. No, that. Uh, no on this on this failure in. of the Aam Aadmi Party, so, because people are upset. They're it, It's beyond disappointment that Mr. Kejriwal decided to go and take a picture at Rajghat yeah, yeah, yeah. instead of reaching out to people, having all your MLAs, all 62 of them, overwhelmingly elected just now. Uh, uh, is the AAP so helpless that it couldn't so, have gotten into action earlier? Look, uh, or even now. No. So, uh, one thing is, as far as the compensation and all that, the you would have seen as press. It's conference. not about compensation. No, so I know that, Nidhi. So first of all, I need to I need to address up front that, in terms of addressing some of those issues, we started doing it yesterday. In terms of whether we should have hit the ground earlier, absolutely spot on. Uh, we are not going to debate on that. We are not going to do it. We are not going to uh, walk away saying we. Uh, uh, that so we did a great job, but there are certain issues which you know which trouble us in terms of as a as a political person. Just putting in my police hat also. Even if the chief minister travels to the affected areas, now Prakash Singh ji may agree with me is it might lead to a, a further acceleration, you know, diverting resources and all. So those are Hobsonian choices you need to continuously take. I'm just saying I'm not walking away from our guys. 61 MLAs. Yes. No, 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 one second, Natasha. Which resources no, no, are going that will get diverted? No, no, first, the first question. Can reach. No, no, look, the question the ambulances can be. And spot on. We were taken totally flat footed on, in terms of the speed and the way it escalated. Our responses could have been a bit better. But in terms of intent, in terms of doing it now, and there are lots to do it in terms of rehabilitation. Rain Basera thing. I, I disagree with Natasha because we don't have any other place to put them right now. Immediately, where do you put Why them? Why not? Why where, not? Where would you put them, Natasha? Why? Use the schools. Relief, the schools. relief the schools. camps are set up. Yeah, exactly. There are school so campuses. There are stadia. No, 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 that's that a good idea. That's a good suggestion. suggestion. No, Take an absolutely back. valid suggestion. Valid suggestion. Absolutely. Valid suggestion accepted. You know, the just, uh, just just quick comment. Here. I want to add. I the, met the re I met the rehabilitation the commissioner yeah, of of uh, Delhi yesterday. I was in a part of a meeting uh, that happened with them. And you know these promises were made these, that that schools will be opened, schools were named, that there's a stadium in Shadra, people will be moved there, supplies will be moved, and today the Delhi government went back on all of that. Today they said go back to Ren Baseras. What 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 kind of uh, you think Ren Baseras can take an extended no, family of twelve? No, so Ajoy, can you take that feedback no, back to your Even leadership? No, absolutely. Right now, in fact, right after the show, in fact, I'll try to uh, speak to the guys. And absolutely, they're already look. traumatized, and now they're going to sleep on the and footpath. So, if so, you look at this, in the, so, if you look, so the history, history, but one just, just one second, just oh, one second. He wants, he wants, ahead, huh? See, if you look at the entire history, whether there were disasters or everything, schools were the first places where people were moved into, all over India. So this is not a rocket science to understand that the school could but, be used. But now second, mosques, second, second, I mean, yes. And second, are. let me tell you, there are two aspects of this, victims and rioters. And in all probability, we take it, I'm not including the illegal immigrants are out here, they could be or could not be. The fact, they are our own people. We have been concentrating on victims, but rioters. That is why Mohan Bhagwaji today said, it is important for us to realize our own duties and self-discipline. And the rioters out here, and they were huge in numbers. The society, as a society, what has gone wrong? When thousands and thousands of people come on the road, they were not rioting. thousands. They were hundreds, and no, a no, lot thousands. of them were between they were 16 and 18. And, and you can't We've even all count seen them. The but, but, but please don't take Please do not sensationalize. So so please, please don't be so provocative. So I have a simple question. If 
If please, we please, please hold on. We are all watching. It One was sec. a televised this is, riot. This is, sir, guys like I'm Kapil talking Mishra about the duties and responsibilities of the citizens. Yes, so Mr. please Anog. don't make provocative These statements. The writers are also sir, happy Kapil to be Mishra citizens of this country. Sir, Kapil Mishra should be arrested or not? Come se come, itna to bata dijiye. Anurag if he should, because I'm saying if 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 there is evidence, Thayar Hussain should be arrested if there is evidence. No, no. See, I'm making a larger issue. Probably people are missing. Kapil Mishra should be arrested or not? No, no. Please hold on. Please hold on. I'm making a larger issue out here. Come on, sir. What is there to say? Hold on. Let me complete. I never interrupt in during. Okay, you know, I was very happy that it was despite this being a very horrible subject to be having a debate on, yeah. I don't. I, I was trying to see if we could have a constructive conversation. See, so let's try to do that without. That's what I'm trying let, to let's do. Please, yeah. let's not try to divide us here in the studio no, no, as I'm well. Not, I'm not. Really, rather not. See, I have not given color to the. I have saying there are certain set of writers on one side, and they happen to be our own people. The duties and responsibilities of a citizen have been abdicated out here. And where have we gone wrong? These are, things come out from society. The political class also comes from the society. Everybody comes out of the society. That is what the point Prakash Singh Ji was raising out here. The people. So the duties, the responsibilities what, of the people is also what very... What about the responsibility of people like Kapil Mishra Vese? They also have the duties and responsibility. Should he be arrested or not? No, the fact is, if that, that particular statement shows a cognizable offense, he should be arrested. Do you think it shows? As a lawyer, he can be successfully defended. Let me tell you that. Uh, well, that answers that answers that question. By the way, mm. quick question to you, Ajoy Kumar, yeah. because this news has come in just now that the AAP government has given the sanction to prosecute Kanhaiya for the slogans in JNU. What happened there? No. So again, bad timing because it happened ten days back. Actually, so it's happened come ten out days today. back. Yeah. So <laughs> I we got a release saying that this has happened and then there was a and it's between uh, the internal communication this has happened 10 days back it's got no correlation with what's happening in delhi at all the fact is that the news has come out now and seems to be uh, going around but the sanction happened from the government 10 days back before this whole thing uh, even started so that's <laughs> one all this time there was no sanction being given so what changed no 10 days back so the no, moment I know, we came into all this all this no, time so it's I been think, dragging on in no, court first of all the delay happened for the police investigation for a significant period of time we were over it for, uh, I think, around uh, one, uh, 18 months or 14 months or so. The moment the government came in power, we gave the sanction. But I think this Kanaya thing and the sanction thing is a, is a red herring because it will divert our attention. The fact is that it happened as soon as the government came into power because it was a government procedure. And even I was, I saw your scroll running and that's uh, the time when I typed out and, you know, got a feedback that it was an old issue which was resolved 10 years back. So honestly, I mean, that's What's a fact. What's going on? Why are human rights defenders being uh, no, no, prosecuted question, for sedition? See, Natasha, Natasha, first Wh question. Why are people who are leading people I think, movement? Once again, let, nigger, you know, let Natasha ask no, Natasha, one yeah, second. No, no, one thing. The civil, no, one so, second. No, one issue. No, no, there. because there seems to, the reason, the there reason is I'm connecting here. it to no, this, no, there is there a pattern in the way the Aam Aadmi Party is doing its politics? No, first of all. Which is why the sanction to prosecute Kanhaiya is not something that is isolated. The liberal, the liberal mindsets, and we, and we, you believe that we should have been included in that, but let's for a minute hold it, believes that if Kapil Mishra's speech is offensive, and if Mr. Kanaya's speech was offensive, based on evidence, then they should be dealt they in the same... No, one second, Natasha, can I... They are talking about no, incitement say, I, to violence. One, one second, one second. I'll just complete. Offensive is no, no, freedom of speech. I, Natasha, you can, can I complete? No, no, the point is your... I am not... If the police found evidence, requested for a prosecution, found adequate evidence for it, we need to also be clear that any speech, whether it's Kapil Mishra, whether it is Dr. Ajay Kumar, whether X, Y, Z, if it crosses that boundary, you can't choose that Mishra's speech is not acceptable and X, y, X speech is acceptable yeah, because it might kill. No, once it, no, no, because it might kill. Again, no, it's not a pattern. No, I, I mean, continuously say that politically one does state. see a pattern because there is a very clear line that Mr. K. G. Wal seems to have taken where he will not stand up for the students of Jamia, where he will not go to JNU, where no, he has so given sanction to prosecute Kanhaiya, where he will so, wear so, his hin so, so Hinduness on his sleeve, which we didn't ever see in no, his no, previous so, so political let me, avatar. Let me ask you, let me so, ask you when, no, let me ask so you is the AAP trying no, to be so no, a B so team second. of the so BJP? So when the AAP asked Kapil Mishra to take action on, then nobody said we stand here on. We said we voted against the CA. We said that you have a right to protest. And listen, the liberal sections, also, and, and including us, keep saying that, listen, the right to protest is there. But do you have the right to protest so that the other guy's freedom is checked in? No. So if we take that stand, oh, by the way, you're non-liberal. We are telling you, please protest, as long as you're within the law. So the whole debate is, it's not them and us. 
If you want to lose a, use the rule of the law, use it. The law. No, Natasha. Well, well the if the protests were not I, I, within I the law, law. See, let's imagine. I let's, the law. Let's I have time. Way out of time, Ajoy. Ajoy. I, I have to uh, absolutely uh, take a break. Nidhi, I'll just ask you one, uh, one uh, small thing. If the road was blocked outside our houses, right? Let's imagine. No, no. Natasha, now you're going no. into a different Would territory. Would we use the same barometer? The question is. We are very liberal when it is somebody else's barometer. The I'm saying if you use it on blocked it. because the yeah, neighbor is getting married by, by this, or someone yeah. has okay, a job. Thing, you know, I, 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 no, I, 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 we feel offended. No, so we you don't. Have okay, one second. Standards. We did also see that when the police removed certain barricades next to Shaheen Bagh, the traffic did open up. But Absolutely. that is another whole show that we can yep. come together on. I do hope that the next time I see most of you, it would be when things are actually completely normal in Delhi and that we have something more positive to build on rather I, than I the violence that we have so. seen yeah. of, of the past Certainly week. and from the point of view yes. of the victims of the riots. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And the, the only heartening stories, as Natasha pointed out earlier, that have come in the past few days have been of those ordinary citizens, whether Hindus, whether Muslims, whether Sikhs, who have come together and helped each other out, irrespective of their religion. They've protected each other. They've protected their places of worship. And that, at the end of the day, is what India is all about. Absolutely. Thanks for watching.